Hi there and welcome to Tita Diaries. This is literally the fourth time I have sat down today to try and film this video. And right now it's quiet. But as soon as I get to a certain point, my neighbor's kids just start screaming. <laughs> welcome to Tita Diaries. And for the oldies, welcome back. Yeah. Today I am doing a chitter chat. It's been a while. The last one I did was my very angry <laughs> video on why I am single. Oh, that was quite aggressive. I apologize. But for those that watched, at least we had a conversation. It was cool. And this was supposed to be, or at least the content in this video was supposed to be associated with my two year anniversary or two years of chitter diaries on YouTube or just in my socials. But I, I didn't do a two-year anniversary because I was busy at the time and then I, I just didn't feel that the need to like there was nothing much to celebrate. I wasn't really feeling it. But yeah, here we are. <laughs> certain things have happened, certain events around the world have triggered my need to talk about my experience over the past two years of being a YouTuber. So when I started out, my first following was literally my family, my friends and my colleagues on Facebook. So I had a Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. YouTube was like my baby, like it's something that, and to this day, like I love the YouTube space more than anything. But Facebook was the easiest platform to grow a following and get engagement, and then you can lead people to other socials or YouTube and whatnot. So I began there, and I had this format initially that I wanted to use for at least Facebook, maybe even YouTube, but I wanted to do four videos a week, okay. I was that serious. <laughs> the first video was going to be a hair video because I was obsessed with hair by, back, back then and how I was relaxed. Second video was going to do with a Zambian product, just highlighting a Zambian product. It could be hair related or beauty or just anything. Third video was going to be me actually going out into the field to a restaurant because I love food or a hair salon. Like I wanted to do all of that. And a fourth video would just be uh, a random vlog or me just you know chatting and talking about my life like i had you know <laughs> big dreams but then someone advised me and i'm so glad like he told me to relax he's like that's a lot to do when you've just started out like you literally have no following it's just family and friends you know relax do one video a week and make it very short maybe just two minutes and actually have the engagement just based on that to me like have something that's worth watching and then build a following off of that and people who are loyal enough to come back and then maybe even watch other things so i took his advice and the one thing i was most passionate about was hair care you know, i started doing hair videos on my phone with like a five megapixel selfie camera very very grainy i know <laughs> but you know, i wanted to start from somewhere and then grow from that and yeah i that's how I began Chitta Diaries, but at the same time, I still really wanted to go through with that format of where I promote this, promote that, because I am Zambian, you know, I'm Zambian, born and raised, and I wanted to promote Zambian things, like most people do, <laughs> like, or as most Zambians say when they come up on YouTube, like everybody says, I, I want to promote Zambian, 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 that I honestly wanted to do that as well. So for the issue of products and businesses and whatnot, I sent emails or I messaged people or I tried calling and I let them know what my intention was and all I wanted was their time. I wasn't asking for sponsorships because I knew I didn't have a following. I wasn't asking for free products. I wasn't asking for discounts. All I wanted was their time, literally their time. And if it was products, I was going to buy them and just review them or use them. And anyways, I was just very excited. <laughs> about starting Chitter Diaries. And so I sent out all these emails at the time and I was 100% ignored. And it hurt my feelings in the beginning, but two years, in fact, it took me just a couple of months to realize that that was very ambitious to do on my part because I had no, like, how do you even reach out to brands when you have no following? Like, like that wasn't, you know, smart. And sometimes it, it wasn't even big brands. It was just maybe other vloggers, or other bloggers ignored. And I understand that now because I had no following. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> but then months go by, my Facebook is growing because back then I, I would put up a video and then boost it and I would get so many new followers. It was nice. My following was growing, people would listen to what I had to say, some people were actually taking my tips seriously despite the grainy <laughs> footage. But it was something. I would reach out again. Certain brands, certain people say, oh, I'm not asking for a partnership, I'm not asking for a collaboration, I'm not asking for money or, or a sponsorship, just literally people's time. 
ignored. When it got to a point, I think maybe like a year, must no, not, not a year, uh, maybe six months, I did reach out to certain bloggers. And now, like, we're actually friends. And they are actually like, yeah, cool, like, I'll happily meet up with you. We can discuss something. One of those bloggers I ended up doing a video with, and it was so much fun. And yeah, like, to this day, like, we're still friends. So eventually, you know what I mean, right? I would get, see, see? I'm sorry. <laughs> I had some successful encounters where I'd reach out to people, would meet up, and we just became good. like even to this day, like we're actually good friends offline. You know, I've had some successful collaborations or just meet up to people within the same field as I am. Now, there were some people that I reached out to, and now this is where the whole thing I was saying some things have happened out there that have triggered <laughs> my need to do this video. For those of you who are, you know, into American beauty bloggers or just brands out there that are international you may have seen this Julia's place drama I was looking at this at laugh and, and laughing at, at everything going down. Yes, it was a bit much Some people are cancelling Julia's place. Some people are saying people are being dramatic by, by, by cancelling Julia's place People are calling Alyssa Entitled and just being a typical influencer who thinks people owe them, you know, their like like their attention or products and then there's the brand owner of Juvia's Place who just went all out, like, 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 wow, like, you didn't have to do that. But anyways, if you don't know, if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, like, literally just search for Juvia's Place. There's so many videos out there, like, I won't, you know, waste your time here. But yes, essentially, Alyssa complaining about how she would reach out to this black-owned brand doing eyeshadow palettes at the time and wanting to be on their PR, because she has a big following, okay? She is an African-American woman. This brand is owned by a, 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 a Nigerian woman and the Nigerian woman basically found you know like a couple of very big influencers who are white with millions of subscribers and she made her peace with that and ignored you know okay according to Alyssa allegedly has been ignoring major African-American vloggers who are have who have far less subscribers than you know the people that this lady was aligning herself with and then now that this lady has products that are complexion products like foundations where she needs people with different shades she's reaching out to them and and Alyssa just found that found that very offensive like why do you need us now when you've been ignoring our existence yeah so i was looking at all of this go down and <laughs> i thought of my own, own experience here okay as a small person on the internet or, or just a person on the internet that tells a story likes to do hair videos every now and then you see what not when I would reach out to certain brands or certain individuals and ask for simply their time, you know, I of course did that because I wanted content for my channel. So I would obviously benefit from reaching out to them. And by featuring them, of course later on, like, like I am right now, like if I reached out to these people and said I would like to do a video, it counts for something. I feel like I'm at a point where if I put a video up with a product, it could be YouTube, I could post something on Instagram or Facebook, one or two people might, will reach out to the brand and actually buy it. But I'm not taking that for granted and saying everybody must give me their products. Of course not. But my point is in the past, I have reached out to people and said, I would like to you know, just spend some time with you, talk about your brand on my platforms. and. I have been ignored <laughs> with several people, several brands. I accept it. It's life. <laughs> it's being an adult. It's business. One, I don't have great numbers. You know, I I don't have a K next to my name on any of my platforms. My engagement isn't that lit. I don't have views and views and views each time I post something. Even in comparison to the number of subscribers or followers, followers that I have, my engagement may not be as appealing to a brand or a person or a blogger or a vlogger who I might want to sit down with and either review or just showcase on my platform. Like, but then with what Alisa actually was saying, she had reached out to the owner of Juvia's Place to get those products you know, which are on her platform, but then this particular owner was working with the brand with millions of subscribers like far more than Alyssa Ashley's and at that time that person didn't see the need to use Alyssa Ashley but now that they needed Alyssa Ashley or people like Alyssa or people you know with okay basically people who could help them sell their brand they now want to reach out to them and you know it was it was, it was, it was quite insulting and rude considering you know their history so 
I have been in situations, right, where, yes, I may have reached out to people. Sometimes it's okay, you know, and I, I, I will talk about this later. It's just polite sometimes to respond and not just blatantly ignore someone when they reach out to you. Because I've been in situations where you reach out to someone, you ask them for so-and-so, they actively ignore you. And then you end up meeting them in other circles or just meet your environment, and it's awkward. And for some of these people... <laughs> Because they've been actively ignoring you, they have to act like they have no idea who you are. Or they just do this thing where they, they literally act brand new and act like, you know, they're meeting you for the first time. Because it's just awkward and now you're meeting as peers when they would actively ignore you because they thought you had nothing to, you know, they had nothing to gain by associating themselves with you. So I have encountered such people. And, you know, in the beginning, sometimes I would give them the benefit of doubt, saying, you know, maybe they're just busy. Or, you know, or maybe my, like my content just doesn't align with their brand and you, know, and you get over it. But then you would see these same people, right? Literally <laughs> trip over themselves to cater to, you know, people with a huge following. Or maybe you might... And, and, and this is the thing, like, Zambia and Osaka in particular is, is a very small... It's a very small place. It's, it's a small world. And... Like you like, like you would talk to people and you're in a in, in a very small space. So when something's happening here, like like you end up catching wind of it. So someone maybe may have been in my position a year or two ago, but they have a couple of K's next to their name. They get approached by these people who would actively maybe have ignored them in the past, but now they want to reach out, let's work together. Or maybe if someone from the abroad is coming and this this happens <laughs> this tends to happen. I, I won't say it happens but it tends to happen. But then you see these same people or these same brands, like literally, like there have been times where it's kind of embarrassing watching this go down, where someone comes from abroad and, you know, they happen to be in town. And then these same people who actively ignore small local vloggers or YouTubers are literally throwing like themselves, you know, <laughs> at these people, being catering to them, just being all up in their stories, in their vlogs. Like it happens and, you know, and I, I just watch from my corner, I'm like, this is embarrassing to look, to look at. But that's their thing, like that's their personality, like they need someone with numbers. They need to associate themselves with, with someone with numbers. And that's what Alisa was complaining about. Not, not just imagine dealing with that, right? Yeah, with someone, you reach out to someone, they actively ignore you. And then one day when they need you, they reach out to you saying, can you do a video for us? Can you do a post for us? Like, can you honestly work with, with, with someone like that? So, so that was, you know, the, the situation with with Alyssa and you know reaching out to brand CTC whatnot and how in the beginning <clears throat> yes I had no following my quality was wasn't that great I did reach out but from my experience and I get it people are entitled and do not want to work with me I'm not mad but I'm just like based off of that and my two years on YouTube it's quite discouraging to even bother with you know dealing with Zambian brands and whatnot and to this day, I honestly feature things that I buy with my own money, that I use and I enjoy. That's the first thing. Second thing <laughs> is now dealing with businesses because I mentioned how I wanted to go to establishments. So I wanted to do this thing where I, either I go to a restaurant or go to a hair salon. Some people manage to do it. I don't, I, I don't know how they talk to these businesses or what the, the, the procedure is up front. There have been times where I've gone to restaurants or whatnot and I've called beforehand and said I would like to vlog, am I allowed to have a camera there and they've let me know. If I'm not allowed, like they'll just say no, you aren't allowed, if you come with a camera, like like you have to pay a certain fee and in some instances they'll let you know, okay fine, if you're going to use a bring an actual camera here, make sure you give us a shout out on your socials and that's cool. But I did this thing initially when I was naive. <laughs> I went to a hair salon and I spoke to the stylist, I was like, Hi, I making a video here, let me know if you're if you're comfortable with it, if you aren't, like, don't worry. In fact, I won't even put your face in it. Like, that's cool. And the stylist said, you fine. So I went ahead and made the video. It was cool beans. I posted it. Second time, I went back to that hair salon. I just took it for granted that that situation in the beginning would be the same now. Spoke to the stylist. I'm like, hi, you know, I'm doing a video. Don't worry, your face won't be in it. If you're not comfortable with that, can I do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, cool. Everything is fine. And then a couple of minutes later, um, I'm... At that time, I, I, I didn't know who that person was, but she eventually like let me know what her role was at the business. She came, you know, she was a <laughs> she was a marketing manager of this um, establishment. She pulled me to her office and said, like, we're like, someone's like, excuse me, can you, can you come here for a second? 
and then you're like you walk into an, an office and even just from the start like you could tell she was upset she had her arms crossed out like why are you filming here so i'm like um uh i have a youtube channel he's like well you didn't ask for permission can i see that footage and at that point i think i'd been there for three hours and i was like um i, I can't just show you my footage i've been here for three hours he's like no 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 this is you know very disrespectful you didn't ask for permission I don't even know, you know, like where you've come from. You, you don't just walk into somebody's business. You're making the studies uncomfortable. Why are you filming her face? Why are you filming our brand? That is taking advantage of us, you know, whatever it is th that you're doing. By you filming this establishment, because you want people to see that you came here and then, you know, they'll click on your video. You, you, you get paid to be a YouTuber. We're, we're supposed to discuss these things, royalties, etc. What, what, like she really came at me and I was in shock. Like I just stood there and I was like, wow. Um, I get what you're saying but you don't have to be this aggressive miss and she was like oh oh my goodness oh my goodness i'm actually being nice i'm actually being nice right now trust me i'm actually being nice and anyways she basically just told me off and said that it was very presumptuous for me to do that and i wasn't allowed i should i should, I, 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 what is it? I should have gotten permission and i was you know <laughs> okay it was a very very humiliating experience for me and i backed away and i was like you know what it's fine like i won't even like either like I'll, like I'll just leave or something. No, in fact, did she wait for me to... Be, I think she waited for me to like finish doing my hair and then she was like, excuse me, like, like, like as I was on my way to pay, <laughs> she was like, come here. So that was really, 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 really embarrassing. Like I was shaking you guys, like I was so humiliated. I think I even cried a bit. <laughs> but I, it was a teachable moment. And you know, like, like I went home and I could either have one, be that petty influencer who could have just blown up and made a, a big deal out of it or i could have just let it go but i was like you know what let, let, let me be mature in this instance so i sent i wrote to the business and i told them you know why i went there what i was doing and then i i you know expressed myself and complained about the way i was treated in that moment like understood where she was coming from but her attitude towards it was quite aggressive and she had no idea who i was you know like she didn't even ask me what my platform was called she just came at me you know and then she took it like like, 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 what is, I had everything to gain from filming that compared to them. So, you know, yes, there's, there's that thing where vloggers seem entitled. So anyways, it was a, basically, it was a, it was a teachable moment. And then I ended up speaking to the manager, like the overall manager, who is a really, really nice lady. Like she, okay, like we hashed it out, we, we talked about it, and then she did apologize for the way things went down, but also expressed that, you know, the reason why that person acted the way they did, you know, it may have been aggressive, but they're trying to protect their brand because you just never know. And it's true, like influencers are not your friends. Someone might walk in one day, give you a great review, and then you just take someone doing something small, and then they just blow it up, and then you know, like, tell all their followers, you know, to to, to cancel your, your your establishment. So I I would get why she was anxious and didn't want me to vlog. So that was a, a teachable moment. But anyways, based off of that, <clears throat> I've just been very conscious going forward. You know and yeah like <clears throat> of of course i went back to that hair salon because <laughs> and that's the thing like if it was a, a place with bad service or they didn't even do my hair well like i'd, I'd have just left but i loved you know like like i like i loved what they did and i loved the stylist how they, they did my hair so i just spoke to the person in general and i even expressed to them that you know what if i didn't love your establishment as much as you know i did and this is the thing the person who came at me isn't even someone i would deal with when i would go there this is just some some other person in a back office who came and reacted that way. I'm like, and, and I was like, I can't let that one person ruin this whole thing for me. So yeah, anyways, we basically hashed things out. We're now like on great terms. Everything is Gucci, but I learned from that experience. Like, you know, people, like vlogging is a new thing in Zamba. And you, can, you can just walk around with a camera, you know. So that was tricky. So that's why I couldn't do the whole going to restaurants and, 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 and things now. I mean, sometimes I do, I will vlog it, but... Because of that experience, like it just made me very aware of not feeling entitled, you know, and just vlogging, you know, like recklessly without asking for permission. And then I think the last thing that I want to talk about is collaborations and my experience with collaborations. <laughs> yeah, so the last thing that I want to talk about is collaborations, okay? And <laughs> I think... Uh, I don't think I've ever actually, yes, I, I have actually reached out to people and said, I'd like to collaborate with you. And other people have reached out to me as well and said, let's collaborate. 
and I know I did a whole rant talking about reaching out to brands and them completely ignoring me I am guilty of doing that to one or two people and I can say right now that a hundred percent of the time it's been guys and just to explain myself for some people okay I I just have trust issues in general because of my own personal experiences even just in real life and people in Lusaka you guys I don't know what's in the water but but some people are just moving mad and they just ruin it for, for, for other people especially if I don't know somebody and then they're just reaching out to me and saying let's collaborate half the time I'm like okay I am a person that does hair videos and lifestyle vlogs what do we have in common like what are we going to benefit from this and, and this is the thing like collaborating is something that you know is supposed to be mutually beneficial for both people or you should at least have a story like, like something in common like something should click but some people will just reach out to you and then you don't know what their intentions are like where is this going like what is this for is this a stunt and i'm not in the business of wanting to do pr stunts you know to get clout or to get i don't know attention or bigger following i'm not about that life so i just have trust issues you know i really do i could do story times about things that happen in real life people who aren't even vloggers or bloggers and i don't know i just feel a, a certain kind of way when i'm dealing with guys because i because i'm like I, I don't know what your motives are like what is this about but there, there was one particular person that i agreed to and even this was a teachable moment with regards to collaborations someone reached out to me and they're like let's do a collaboration and i was like yes i would love to do that i like i would love to you know collaborate with with, uh, with another like zambian youtuber or whatnot I have learned from that experience and that is don't agree to something before checking out the person's content first like don't just say yes and give out all these promises without actually checking out somebody's content you know and I feel like <laughs> we need to come out come up okay I at least need to think of the mature and professional way of telling someone you, that you don't want to collaborate with them because I, I haven't thought of that yet I end up ghosting them which is very mature <laughs> And I feel bad about it, but in this particular case, so like I've mentioned, most of the, like like a hundred percent of the time that I've just ghosted someone or ignored them or not responded to a collaboration request, is when it was a guy that I have no idea, like I, I don't know who they are and I I don't know why they want me to, to meet up, and they haven't made it clear, you know, why they want to meet up with me and collaborate, you know. But for but for this other person, you know, we we did chat, you know, we I. Like I said yes initially and then I went and saw their content and it didn't align with things that I believed in or things that I supported or liked but I was like let's see how we can make this work so we had a talk we made a plan okay what can we talk about and then I said I would get back to them when I was ready because I was I was genuinely busy at the time with regards to school but then during that period that I was busy you know like like I was eventually going to be to finish your school and then you know or that semester and then do something with them their channel just took you know, like a different route and uh, without giving too much away it was it just didn't sit well with my spirit and i'm not like I, I i wasn't their friend like that where i can be like oh like are you okay you seem a bit you know off on your channel like you're uh, yeah okay you, they were acting a, a, a bit weird you know it was a bit desperate and I just caught this vibe like they're dealing with other things and sort of acting out on their YouTube channel and but it was a lot like like where someone just you know comes onto YouTube and they're like subscribe to, like, like like that they really wanted people to subscribe to the channel and 2018 was a year where it was a year where, where people were really talking about you know like like the pressure and anxiety of being on social media and how young people are just dealing with you know like depression and so like, like okay it was a lot and i just didn't want to perpetuate that type of you know validation that people would want to seek on social media by likes or views or what like it's not healthy so that's basically what happened and then from that it moved on to you know this person doing drama content if, if, if you don't know what drama content it's basically where you know you, like, like your content is now based off of other people's like you're now gossiping about other people's content like specifically like literally putting other people's faces and names in your title and your thumbnail and just talking about their content and then in a dramatic way you're just gossiping i know i seem like a messy person <laughs> i am a messy person but 
I mean, you can do one or two videos now and then talking about an issue, but where you just take this turn where your channel is all about drama, like you're, you're literally turning your channel into a, a drama channel, I was just like, mm. it's not something I want to associate with because I, I don't think it's uh, that type of energy isn't something you know I, I would want to be a part of. And then eventually, you know, this particular person's YouTube channel w w was taken down. I, I'm not sure if it was reported or whatnot, but it's, it's not there anymore. So that's my explanation, you know, with regards to collaborations on my part where I have been in the wrong and ghosted people very mature of me to do. I feel bad about it, but you know, those are my reasons. Still not bad, but anyways, I should have just been mature about it and told someone out front instead of leaving them, like, like making them wonder why. But yeah, that's me on collaborations on my part. And then with others, people have literally reached out to me and I'm, I'm even used to it now. Someone will come up, they'll see my channel, I don't know, maybe they'll see one video, they like my energy, like, and then maybe they realize that my numbers are small, my, my engagement is not that lit, and then it's not something that they will benefit from. Because like I said, a collaboration is a bit like, like a mutually beneficial, you know, arrangement, and they probably feel like maybe they have more engagement, more views than I do, and then they cancel, or maybe, or maybe they just don't like my quality, maybe, maybe they, they don't like my content, maybe they, they think I'm problematic. <laughs> I tend to be sometimes I don't even know but I I've just gotten so used to where like even like 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 people will reach out I'm like oh like let's collab I'm like sure anytime and then I like like I know like that they aren't going to do anything about it. There are very few people who I've who I have reached out to and we've done something but who knows in the future with a couple of people who've you know like sent me requests in the the, the, the rec in recent months like maybe we'll do something like maybe you will see a collaboration on this year to diaries like who knows but yeah, that's that with collaborations, and I don't know. <laughs> um, I I know this video is very very long, and it's all over the place. But yeah, I wanted to just talk and you know highlight my two years here on YouTube, and yeah, <laughs> this, there isn't much to celebrate. Am I glad that I'm here? Yes, definitely. Like, trust me, if I didn't like YouTube, I would have stopped a long time ago. Like, I I have over a hundred videos. But less than a thousand subscribers and people literally quit they will have 10 videos maybe 50 subscribers and they're done like 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 they like they're done with this life because they put in so much effort but i genuinely love having this escape i call it by escape it's therapeutic it's just nice to have something that you can control like 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 i literally control this entire channel all my content it's my own creativity like you know like just coming home from work or coming home from school or dealing with other issues that people are controlling you, you know what I mean? It's nice to have something that is just your own where you can just breathe and be creative. So I love my YouTube channel. <sighs> I need to scrap up what I've done <laughs> and, and, and try and piece this together. But hopefully you, you, you know, you watched it, you enjoyed it. Let me know. Let's chat in the comments if there's something that you'd like to talk about. If you're a vlogger who's watching this, I know I have a couple of vlogger friends. If you're watching this, like, you know, let me know what your experience has been thus far or you could do a, in fact i i tag you like do a video of what it's been like for the past x number of years as a youtuber it would be nice to see that and yeah i will end here i'll say thanks again for watching and i will see you in the next one